Yo, yo, yo. How y'all doing today? Smiles here. And I know you y'all are used to me either watching the video or having my computer in the background, but this newsletter is gonna be a little presentation, some a little different. And I have my newsletter in front of me just so I don't trail off. But I just want to get straight into it. So let's just dive right in. Now this is struggling and then struggling some more. So let's get started. So all right, so I did two things this week. All right, I joined a dating show, an e-dating show, and a virtual hot seat with a, a coach of this speaking website. And I did both of these for two reasons. Now, one, you don't learn from the sidelines, okay? And the second one, if you know me, or if, you, if, you, if you've been listening, I always say our communication is an extension of our aura. Now, let me dive a little bit deep into what I mean. So, hold on, let's see. Why is it not working? Let's see. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a baseball analogy that I heard, similar to what Taekwondo said, if y'all know about him. He's a YouTuber. He, he's a dating coach. He makes good content. Shout out to him. Now, I heard a book. I heard him speak about a book that he read. And this topic is deep, so I want y'all to listen carefully to what I say. But in this book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success by Dr. Herbert Harris, it talks about four types of people. And these people are players, watchers, wanderers, and wanderers. Now, players, all right, on the field, okay? This is a baseball analogy. So players are on the field and they're playing the game of life. They have a vision for, and they're pursuing it. The watchers is everyone in the crowd watching, right? The watchers are just spectating the players play the game. The wanderers are not even in the stadium. They're outside the stadium. And these are the people in life who can hear all the noise and they're wondering where the cheering is coming from. Now, these people, they begin pondering their purpose and they question if there's more to life. And then you have the wanderers. Now, these people are all the way at the highway and far from the game, okay? All the way on the outskirts. The wanderers don't even know that the game is being played. And these types these types need to be made aware of finding more meaning. They live superficial lives and they epitomize the saying that ignorance is bliss. So it's the people that only care about fun or the money, the status, the superficial things, the materialism. They don't have any more substance within them. This, now, this is my first time hearing this analogy, and I found it so profound that I decided to investigate it further. And upon investigating it and doing some deep thinking, I determined that there are eight archetypes of people. The average players on the field, the star players on the field, the players on the sideline, the coaches, the watchers, the the wanderers, the ignorers, and then the wanderers. So let me break this down within the context of a dating show. So let me bring it back. So the players are the people who call into the dating show, right? The star players are the players who successfully passed. Now this looks different on whatever dating show. Some may have you, some may take you through different scenarios. You got to get through scenarios. Some may just have you call in. Some may just have you try to get Instagram. Whatever it is, it's different for each show. Now, the coaches are the, or I mean, the players on the sideline. Now, these are the players who are the are viewing the show and they want to call in, but they don't. So they sit on the sidelines. They could be playing, but they choose not to. The coaches are the dating coach or the host of the show in this little box right here. Now, the spectators or the watchers, everyone in the stadium, they just spectate for pure entertainment. Okay, they don't they don't they don't care about going in and talking to the person. Now, the wanderers, these are the people who are outside the stadium and 
they maintain a skeptical attitude towards the legitimacy of a show's ability to per- to participants to build genuine connections. And that's mainly because it's a lot of glitz and glamour within a format of a show. So people may think it loses its authenticity and it lacks the ability to gain a genuine connection. Now the ignorers, these people, they don't care that the show exists. They know that the game is being played. They can hear the cheering. They, they can, they can, they know that players are in their plan, right? But they do not care about it at all. They ignore it. And then you have the wanderers who are on the outskirts, which I mentioned earlier, and they don't even know that the show exists. So, who do you think wins? And the answer is pretty simple: it's the players that are playing in the, in the game. You don't learn from being on the sidelines, okay? You don't learn from being on the sidelines. In fact, if you really think about it, I could watch every single box of highlight ever to exist, right? But I still must practice daily. You don't read a manual on how to ride a bike. You don't watch art tutorials on how and then become an artist. You simply do it and then you fail or learn what didn't work. And you keep doing it. Eventually, you're good at it. And it takes massive persistence and patience to be great at it. Now, essentially, that's all learning is. Okay. Now, I've never heard anybody say this. So I'm, so I'm, the creator of this quote, if you hear somebody say it, they got it from me. Okay. Learning is simply the application of inputs to attain a specific output. You apply what you learn and you iterate or you practice and repeat. Not until you get it right, but until you can't get it wrong. Now, this baseball knowledge I talked about earlier, this can be about anything. In general, it illustrates the winners and losers. Now, you win if you pursue your goals. You lose if you don't even try. Now, as I stated in an earlier newsletter, one of my goals this year is hyper-focus, right? I want to be dialed in tunnel vision on my goals. Now, another primary goal of mine is to improve speaking skills. I want to put myself in unfamiliar environments to stretch my comfort zone. Why? Because I know that's where the most growth is. Some of you may know who this is. In fact, all of you might. And as David Goggins says, it's important to be comfortable being uncomfortable. It's like fear and roller coasters, but then you get on anyway, and then you realize there was nothing to fear. And then you want to get on more rides because you've proven that the fear was self-created. And better yet, you've proven that you can overcome unfamiliar environments. Now, what can these unfamiliar environments look like to some of y'all? Getting on the data show and getting put on a hot seat. Speaking. Uh, with live debates in front of an audience, speaking on the stage, performing on the stage. You know, this is rolling loud. Giving presentations to wealthy investors, giving presentations to a broad audience, talking to a group of women by yourself. The list goes on, but you must feel the fear and do it anyways. The point is to put yourself in uncomfortable situations despite the anxiety. Believe it or not, it gets easier before it gets better. Okay. Well, actually, no. I messed that up. It gets harder before it gets better. But how can you enjoy something if you don't have yet enough time to see yourself enjoy it? You got to stick with something long enough. And that's why there's this graph that perfectly explains everything I'm talking about here. With everything new that you learn, you endure an inevitable daunting learning curve, right? Now, with this learning curve, in the beginning, you have uninformed optimism. You think that things are going well until you realize how hard it is and you're informed, aka the phase two where you you have a pessimistic attitude towards it. Eventually, this pessimism leads you into a valley of despair. And this is mostly where people quit in phase three. Now, those of you that don't quit and the people that don't, they stick with it long enough slowly but surely they start to have a little bit more informed optimism they start to gain those little small wins and those small wins transitions them and propels them into success or the fifth phase which is fulfillment but most people give up here and there's understand it makes sense why because it's the lowest most challenging point to overcome before seeing progress now struggling can intimidate some people because they're vulnerable to criticism or failure damages their ego. 
However, people have yet to start anything they do at a pro level. It takes time, persistence, self-belief, high stress, tolerance, and overall just faith that it will work out. Now, here's just a, another example of the process of transition. This is what they call it, of the, of the previous graph I just gave you. But this highlights the emotions that you have along the way. So at first it seems anxious, and then you seem happy because you started to see some success. And then you feel fearful, which means you're in denial because you don't, you can't believe. It's, it attacks your ego. This is the part where I talked about how it attacks your ego. It threatens your ego. You feel guilty that you can't do it. Now you're depressed. The valley of despair is where most people quit. You become hostile, and you become resentful, anger, hateful, jealous of the people that you see doing it. And then... Those of you that don't fall into this valley of despair too long or give up, gradually you see that acceptance for yourself and you begin to just move forward. Eventually you get the success that you were looking for. It just takes a lot of time. At the end of the day, you create opportunities in life when you seek the unknown. Okay? Now, these opportunities allow you to learn, grow, and expand your capabilities. So that was my newsletter for this week. I'm going to keep it very short and simple. Let me know if y'all like the presentation style. I'm not going to add any music in the background. I'm not going to really do a lot of edits. Keep it simple. So yeah, let me know if y'all like this or not. And with that being said, like, comment, subscribe, hit the like button. Hey, road to 1K, man. We on the way. It's got a slow, slow burn. Man, I'm not tripping. This is this is a, a lifelong journey, so we can take our time with this for real. But with that being said, though, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all learned something. Go back and digest everything I said if it didn't make sense. And with that being said, y'all stay up, bro. Seize the day.